reconnect and heal today. Welcome to Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Love Never Dies on Dream Vision 7 Radio Network and Dr. Turndorf, Turn on the Love on Binge Networks TV. So listen, first of all, I want to call out the phone number so that if you're listening live as opposed to listening to the pre-record, the, you know, the the post show, the recording, uh, if you're live now and you have any question or comment or any issue that you would like me to help you with, I want you to know how you can get through to me live. So Five eight seven. That's eight eight three six nine five three five eight seven. And then you're going to push star nine, and that will enable you to raise your hand. And then my engineer, my lovely engineer Bob, will let me know that you're waiting to talk to me. So what are we talking about today? I decided to do today's show because of all the fighting that I'm hearing is going on in the world. People are cooped up with the COVID nineteen. People are stressed out about money, the state of the world, the political unrest. There's all kinds of horrendous fighting, lots of separations, lots of breakups and divorce. I'm seeing fights are ruining relationships. And so uh, if you're feeling like you're on the verge of a breakup because of your fights, uh, I want you to know that help is on the way, dear. That's like the, um, the Mrs. Doubtfire, Mrs. Doubtfire, help is on the way, dear. Have no fear, Dr. Love is here for you. My conflict resolution method is just what the doctor ordered and I'm ordering this for you and for everyone you love. So I'm gonna talk about today, the most common fight pattern that couples who are fighting experience. And it's called the demand withdraw negative escalation cycle or husband withdrawal for short. And no, I'm not talking about a natural form of birth control. Husband withdrawal refers to the way men distance in order to escape fighting. Now, you know what it looks like. Uh, The more a woman gets in a guy's face, the more he withdraws. Now, the more a man withdraws, the angrier the partner gets, and that creates more fighting and more husband withdrawal. And this is a vicious cycle that is the number one cause of relationship fighting and breakups and divorce and even domestic violence, because what happens is if you're predisposed to physical violence, as you continue fighting more and more over time, the man doesn't have a chance to flee before he can become physically violent and then the violence happens. But I don't want you to worry because I'm gonna share with you my proven method for stopping husband withdrawal dead in its tracks. And this is the best news of all. When husband withdrawal stops, men actually wanna stick around and resolve the conflicts with you. And that's easily achieved. The actual conflict resolution part of my method is very easy. So kissing your fights goodbye is so much easier than you ever thought. And this is your path to a lifetime of lasting love because it's not that we don't love each other. People who break up often still love each other, but they don't know how to manage the inevitable conflicts and then the consequent fighting that arises in all of our intimate relationships. So I'm gonna give you a scenario just so you get a picture of a common fight scenario, okay? And this example is addressed to the women who are watching, but guys, don't worry because you're gonna be able to relate to this example. So. Ladies, imagine you're in the middle of a really heated argument with your partner and suddenly his eyes glaze over and he seems to be deaf. Sound familiar? Now, he's apparently not listening to what's bothering you. So what do you do? You get louder. You turn up the volume, hoping you're going to blast the wax from his ears. But that doesn't work because instead of hearing you and listening and understanding you, he digs his heels and he defends his actions. Now you're really mad. So you crank your emotional thermostat even higher and you hammer harder. A big surprise, he's more deaf, 
more defensive or just plain out of there in the flash of a firefly. Now, millions of women throughout the world are all too familiar with the way men distance emotionally or physically whenever conflict and fighting erupts. And this demand withdraw negative escalation cycle or husband withdrawal is, as I said, the number one cause of relationship and marital conflict and divorce, as well as domestic violence. Now, husband withdrawal is actually like a collision of two incompatible modes of handling conflict, that of the wife or the girlfriend who intensely expresses her hurt and her anger, and that of the husband or the partner, the male partner who withdraws from the confrontation. Now, my first Hay House book, Kiss Your Fights Goodbye, outlines my method for ending the chronic relationship fighting that's caused by this husband withdrawal. But I want you to know that even if the roles are reversed, and even if the woman is the one doing the withdrawing, my method works for the majority of married and unmarried, gay and straight couples who use it. And the method also works for resolving fights with friends and family members and coworkers. All right, so let's take a moment to dive into what causes husband withdrawal. So first off, you've gotta know men's bodies are hardwired to be hyper-reactive to stress and danger. This programming dates back to prehistoric times when men were hunters and they needed to react with lightning speed to flee or to fight dangerous prey. Now, modern danger is no longer the ferocious tiger, it's the angry wife or girlfriend. And when she comes at him, baring her teeth and berating him with criticism, his body sees danger and involuntarily switches into autonomic nervous system or what we know of as ANS arousal, and that triggers the fight flight response. Now, most men don't want to physically fight their partners. So instead of fighting, they flee instead. Now, here's an important thing to know. Now, remember, I introduced this information when I was on the Today Show in New York City. And I remember I was in front of a live audience and I explained the three ways that men flee from conflict. And this is something men don't know and women don't know. And I remember the audience just whispering like, whoa, this is so important to know because it already helps you to be less angry when you understand that the three ways that men flee, the, all three are involuntary. The first type of fleeing that they do is physical. When he leaves the room or the house, hides out in his workshop, avoids coming home, that's physical fleeing. That's the flight, okay? The second type of fleeing is mental or psychic fleeing, where the mind takes a hike. So he's physically present with you, but he's mentally gone. He's, he looks deaf, dumb, blind. He practically drools on his tie. He's wearing a no hablo inglés expression. He's here physically, mentally fl flown the coop. Now, the last type of fleeing is what I call verbal fleeing. This kind of fleeing is where the man escapes responsibility, makes excuses, defends himself. He's verbally escaping responsibility. Now, here's the point. When you don't know that these various fleeing behaviors are caused by a primitive and involuntarily, an involuntary biological programming, a woman thinks, oh, he's just fleeing because he doesn't care enough about me to resolve the fight. And then the hurt morphs into anger. And she expresses that anger with greater and greater intensity. And in this way, we unwittingly set off more biological fire alarms, more ANS arousal, more fleeing, and this is how escalating cycles of fighting happens. This is what the world is in today. Because if you don't know how to resolve your conflicts if, and fights, and you don't know how, you don't have the skills to do it, your fights go unresolved. And so you've got leftover ANS arousal, residual arousal. So the next time that problematic topic comes up, you're already in a state of ANS arousal, you never return to baseline. And in, con in conflicted relationships, the, the science proves that we never return to normal baseline chemistry. That's why you have a hair trigger, short fuse, and you, you practically never stop fighting or the topic comes up and you're off and running again at the, at the first word or mention of the topic. How do you break this cycle? 
this chemical imbalance that causes more withdrawal and more fighting. How do you break this cycle? And you do it by using what I have coined as relationship climate control. Now, remember I said heated fighting is what triggers the chemical imbalance in men's bodies that cause them to flee. Well, it turns out that cooling the climate literally shuts off the fight flight response. And this makes husband withdrawal magically disappear. Then, and only then, is a guy gonna stick around to resolve the fight or the conflict with you. Now, there are three main ways that I'm gonna to talk to you about now about how to cool the conflict. The first way to cool the climate, the first relationship climate control technique is to identify and eliminate what I call your fight traps. These are those faulty fighting tactics that heat the climate, cause more chemical imbalance, more withdrawal and more fighting. So how do you both identify and eliminate your fight traps? Well, first you gotta recognize them. And I group fight traps into two categories, open and secret warfare. Now the open warfare fight traps are more, the, more of the direct forms of acted out anger, like name calling, put downs, character assassination, guilt tripping, I told you so, paybacks, you know, in your face, you can't miss it, it's open warfare. Now, there are also secret warfare fight traps. And these are more subtle, but they still heat the climate, still cause the chemical imbalance that leads to withdrawal and more fighting. So some of the secret warfare fight traps are, oh, I forgot, like somebody perpetually doesn't remember what you said or what he agreed to. Recruiting allies where you bring in someone else to strengthen the power of your punch when in your argument. You, silent treatment and you get the idea. Now in Kiss Your Fights Goodbye, I outline all of the fight traps. So the point is you've got to ditch all of them because you gotta remember whatever you say or do boomerangs back at you. And while it may feel good to get your rocks off in the moment on the rocks is where your relationship is gonna end up if you don't identify and eliminate all your fight traps. How you ha handle your conflict determines whether your relationship is gonna make old bones or end up in the boneyard, okay? So the key to remember in fight traps is most people act out their angry feelings using words and actions that are designed to hurt the other person. And again, it feels good in the moment, you get your rocks off, but your relationship is gonna end up on the rocks if you do this. So if this is a matter of pulling up our big boy and our big girl pants and saying, I'm gonna grow up. It may, you know, Controlling myself feels less pleasurable than dropping a load on somebody's head. But whatever you say and do, boomerangs back on you. You hurt the other person, you're ultimately hurting yourself and the relationship. You hurt your partner, you hurt yourself. Okay, so remember this. Now, this also takes tremendous, tremendous strength and maturity. And as a world, we are struggling with lack of what I call impulse control. I feel it, I'd say it. I feel it, I do it. And we're in great difficulty in our intimate relationships and as a world at large, because we're not exhibiting impulse control. You know, this reminds me of a story maybe 35 years ago, I know I don't look that old, right? 35 years ago, I had an office in New York City, one of the most famous families in America called me and asked if I would help them work with their son-in-law who was just arrested for flashing. You're thinking, Jamie, where are you going with this? Stay with me, you're gonna see the connection to impulse control. This guy came to my office and when he got out of jail and I said to him, look, you have an impulse disorder. And if you want to heal this problem, you've got to keep it in your pants, literally and figuratively, because it's when you sit on the urge and don't whip it out that we will be able to identify what the thoughts and the feelings and the struggles are and talk them through and work it out. But every time you whip it out, we discharge the underlying feelings and there's no opportunity now to get at what it is and work it through. So in the same way that I told him to keep it in his pants, you got to keep a civil tongue in your mouth. Keep it in your pants. Keep it in your mouth. Got it? All right. Now, 
The second way to cool the climate is to what I call train your brain to fight for you, not against you. Now, this is a lot easier said than done because it's easy to fall into what I call the echo process. This echo process is a negative cognitive distortion that causes us all to unconsciously hear our parents talking when our partners are speaking to us. And relationship trouble erupts when we distort what we see and hear. So let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. So a wife makes chicken for dinner every Tuesday night. And on one particular Tuesday night, the husband says, is tonight chicken night again already? She freaks on him and she goes, what, you don't like my chicken? You can cook for yourself. He just meant he couldn't believe how fast time flies and that it was Tuesday again. But she, through her echo process, heard her critical parent telling her that her chicken recipe stink. Get it? So to break the echo process, you've got to use my technique called training your brain to fight for you, not against you. And this consists of the first thing, hold your horses. When you get reactive, you hold your horses and don't say or do anything. The next thing is you take a step back in time in your mind. You then take a hard look at reality and you ask yourself, is there even a 1% chance that I might be overreacting? Because when I took a step back in time, I realized that my dad always put me down. So I'm bracing for it and I'm hearing put downs even in innocent statements, right? So that is what happened to me back then. Is there even a 1% chance that I might be wrong and I might just be in an echo process? And then you check out your suspicion by asking the other person, did you mean to say to me that you don't like my chicken recipes? And then the per your other person will say, no, I meant, gosh, it's Tuesday already. And now you've headed off the fight and you smooth any ruffled feathers. In this case, it would be chicken feathers and you've aborted a fight. Right now, the final way that we're going to cool the climate, and this is a biggie, is to identify and heal what I call the old scars from childhood. Now, these are not the old injuries you suffered in the gym or during a war. I'm talking about the emotional scars that we all carry from our deformative years. And that is not a joke. Childhood is our deformative years because we're injured and it deforms us in specific ways and we limp along into adulthood carrying these old scars. The old scars always heat the marital climate and fuel our fights in two ways. The first way is by causing fight intensity. So old scars create a disproportionate reaction to present day events. This is because the brain works by association. We're always comparing present day events with the earlier experiences we suffered as kids or subsequent traumas that just drove the original old scars home. Now I'm calling this the emotional lake effect. So think about the actual lake effect where a storm gathers force and intensity as it passes over the great lakes, okay? And then it dumps all that moisture on the leeward shores and creates a big storm. Well, our brains operate in the same way. We are always dipping into the reservoir of our unconscious and emotionally remembering similar past hurts to whatever has triggered us in the moment. And this explains why fireworks are going off inside of you over a small offense in the now, because the unconscious associations add fuel to your fire. So you're actually drowning in feelings from past similar hurts and not even knowing it because the old memories are in the unconscious memory bank adding fuel and you don't even know they're adding fuel. So when you have a disproportionately intense reaction to an apparently minor event, that's your first clue that an old scar is fueling your fire. Let me give you an example of what I mean. So a husband and wife are in a restaurant and the husband keeps looking at his wristwatch, checking the time. The wife goes nuts. She says, listen, if you can't wait to get out of here, let's get the check. Let's get out of here. He's like, what? 
I don't get it. You know, I'm just checking the time to make sure I feed the meter on time and I'm getting handed an emotional fine. What the heck? The reason that she was so mad is because her emotional lake effect reminded her of her dad who never had time for her, who was always rushing to get back to something else and ditch her. So she went into an emotional lake effect, yeah? Now, the second way you know you're in the emotional lake effect is you can't shake the feeling. So when your old scars are triggered, it's going on unconsciously. And that's why you can't shake the bad feeling that's erupting toward the person you're fighting with because you're not aware that the old scar is triggered. You're experiencing an emotional memory that's dis disembodied from the actual memory and you don't know where the feeling, the intensity of the feeling is truly coming from. You can't wrap a rain, uh, your brain around the real issue and resolve it therefore. So you're just stuck with these intense feelings you can't shake and this heats the climate and creates more fighting. And because most people are not aware of what the core issue is, that old scar, they end up fighting about the over issue that got the ball rolling, like lack of foreplay, or you're glued to the TV, or your uh, garbage you know, is sitting in the kitchen, you didn't take it out. And the overt fight acts like a smoke screen, and it actually conceals the real issue, the old scar that lurks beneath the overt fight content. And until the real emotional issue is identified, you can never achieve a resolution. And then the fights go unfinished, the climate just gets hotter and hotter. Get it? Now, when we come back from the break, I'm gonna tell you how to get out of this trap. And it involves stripping, but not the kind of stripping you think. I'll be back with you in a moment on Love Never Dies Radio on Dream Vision 7 Radio Network and Dr. Turndorf, Turn on the Love on Binge Network's television. It's Dr. J.B. Turndorf here. Are you feeling stressed, tense, jumpy, jittery, anxious, or having panic attacks or angry outbursts or disturbed sleep? Are you worried that you or someone you love is going to get sick or even die? Are you depressed and feeling hopeless like the world is coming to an end? Or are you suffering aches and pains or stiff muscles, low energy, or falling into self-damaging or addictive behaviors like binging on junk food, the internet, or TV, or abusing drugs or alcohol, or not eating right, or exercising, feeling like, what's the point? If you said yes to any of my questions, you are likely suffering what I call the global PTSD pandemic stress syndrome triggered by the coronavirus pandemic. Don't despair. My energetic system upgrade is your rescue remedy for the panic epidemic that is plaguing our world. The energetic system upgrade has already helped some of today's top leaders. Now you can experience your own energetic system upgrade healing transformation. To find out more and to schedule your session, visit drjamieturndorf.com slash energetic system upgrade. That's Dr. Jamie Turndorf, T-U-R-N-D-O-R-F dot com slash energetic system upgrade. Love Never Dies is now on the Dream Vision 7 radio network every Wednesday and Thursday at 1 p.m. and 1 a.m. Eastern Time. Dr. Jamie Turndorf, also known as Dr. Love, is the number one international best-selling author of Love Never Dies, How to Reconnect and Make Peace with the Deceased. If you're grieving the loss of a loved one, tune in and find out how to reconnect and heal any unfinished business using Dr. Turndorf's groundbreaking new Dialoguing with the Departed technique. Visit AskDrLove.com to find out more. This is Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, uniting mankind with universal love. Our shows are created from the heart 
bringing each listener to a place of divine enlightenment. Breathe, relax, and enjoy. Let life flow. You're listening to Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. If you yearn to get along better with your life partner or spouse, friends, family members, and even co-workers, Dr. Turndorf's book, Kiss Your Fights Goodbye, Dr. Love's 10 Simple Steps to Cooling Conflict and Rekindling Your Relationship shows you how to turn conflict into connection for a lifetime of lasting love. Find out more about Kiss Your Fights Goodbye at AskDrLove.com. This is Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. This show is for you, the listener. Once again, here's Dr. Turndorf. Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Love Never Dies Radio on Dream Vision 7 Radio Network and Dr. Turndorf, Turn on the Love on Binge Networks TV. I want to give you the call-in number again. I know it's difficult if you're in the car, very hard to take note of the ID number, but I'm going to give it to you in case you're at a spot where you uh, can call in if you have a question, you need me to just reassure you about something or help you out with something, I'm here for you. The toll-free number is 646-558-8656. And then you press uh, 883-695-357 and then press star nine. And that will show my engineer, Bob, that you've raised your hand and we'll let you on. All right, so before we took the break, I talked about how you can reverse the emotional lake effect that is causing your fights to escalate out of control because without knowing it, old scars have been ripped open by your current fight. So I explained to you that stripping is the way to reveal the old scars. And I'm not talking about getting naked. I'm talking about stripping away the overt content of the fight, the thing that you think you're fighting about, the toilet seat is up. I fell in the toilet and got a buttocks bath. Uh, you didn't take the garbage out. You know, you didn't come home on time. These are all the overt subjects. And when you get caught in disputing the overt subjects, you're missing really the old scar that's fueling you. So how do we strip away the overt fight content to uncover the old scar that's really fueling your ire. To do this, you draw a fight map. And in the fight map, you're gonna remove the content from the equation, the who did what to whom. And you're just gonna focus on charting the emotional course of the fight. You're gonna identify what you feel now, and you're gonna write that down. And then you're gonna write down when you felt that same feeling as a kid. Then you're gonna write down what was going on when you felt that way as a kid, who was doing what to you. And then last but not least, you're going to write down your happy ending. And no, again, I'm not talking about the massage parlor here. This is the happy ending, what you wanted and needed from your parent that you didn't get, or what you wanted and needed from whoever was giving you the pain when you were young. That's your happy ending. So to achieve your happy ending this time around, you're gonna discuss your old scar with your partner, whoever you're fighting with, and you're going to, going to explain what emotional treatment you needed then and now. You're gonna explain your happy ending. And in this way, you and your partner become healing agents for each other. You help each other to heal your wounds, your old scars, and when you do, the fighting vaporizes. Let me give you an example. Many years ago, I had a husband and wife come to see me. They were in a fight that had been going on for decades, literally like 30 years. He was a minister. And the fight was that they were not having sex. And he was angry at her for, with, for depriving him of sex. And the more she deprived him, the more angry he was so I had to have both of them strip. And no, I wasn't having them strip their clothes because to heal their sexual fight, I had to figure out what old scar was being activated. And here's what we uncovered. The man, the minister, had a mother who never was affectionate with him. So when the wife got a hysterectomy and lost her drive, 
He went into his emotional lake effect and felt that his wife was like his mother, rejecting him and abandoning him and not wanting him. His hurt morphed into anger. And when he was so angry at her, he became the mother that was always mad at her. So how did, could she even feel like having sex with her husband when he became the mother who was always scowling and furious, you see? So the two old scars were really what were causing the overt fight about the no sex. So once I helped them both to identify the underlying old scar and heal together, the the wounded part of themselves so that she was able to talk to him and say, listen, I love you and I want you to feel wanted by me. And I don't want you to feel I'm your mom who doesn't love you, but I still don't have desire because my drive is low and my hormones are low, but I want to be loving to you and find a way to give you pleasure, even if I don't have desire and I can't respond. And then he in turn felt her love, which dissolved his old scar and healed it so that he wasn't scowling at her anymore, right? He wasn't scowling and angry, which made her even more want to come to him. And soon they had a game that they would play where they'd say, want to get dressed for the shower, which meant to take their clothing off and strip, not strip away the overt content, but strip their clothes now because they really wanted to be loving and make love with each other. So I want to just take a moment to just make an aside about value conflicts, because we're in a time now where there are incredibly divergent values and couples are conflicting about their divergent political values. And there's a lot of fighting at home around this. And of course, value conflicts really heat the climate and cause the chemical imbalance that triggers more withdrawal and fighting. By the way, You've been hearing me talk a lot about electrotransdermal magnesium, and I've been telling you, I don't sell it. I'm not a distributor. Uh, I don't make commissions. It's just part of my mission to help connect souls, right? When you're fighting and you're in ANS arousal, you desperately need the electrotransdermal magnesium because your entire nervous system now is out of balance. And I have used the electro with couples who are fighting and they put it on and it immediately switches them from ANS arousal, which is also known as sympathetic arousal into parasympathetic mode, which is peace and calm. So if you're starting to fight, and yes, your chemistry is out of balance. That's what causes fighting. It's always got a chemical underpinning. You need the transdermal magnesium. And you can get it at um, www.electra, E-L-E-K-T-R-A, magnesium.com.au. And Sandy Sanderson, who is the CEO and the, the fabricator of it, will take good care of you. She'll help you out. You'll tell her that I sent you. Okay, so now let's talk again about the value conflicts. How do you know if you're fighting over a value-laden con con conflict? Well, values could be political, sexual, religious, monetary. Whenever you're fighting on any of these value-laden areas, you have to agree to disagree, but not engage in fighting over these values. Why? Because values form the core of a person's identity. So trying to strong arm a person into changing his or her values or beliefs is not only disrespectful, it's like trying to have a leopard change its spots. Our values make up who we are. Let me give you an example. Let's say, that um, a husband was raised in a religious sect that said, you're not supposed to do any kind of work on Sunday. And the wife in her first family, they did chores on Sunday. So they keep arguing, why can't he do chores? Why can't he help her? And to him, it's, it's a sacred day. It's the Lord's day. That's not the day that I was raised to do chores. So arguing around this, is completely value laden and, and you're never going to resolve these fights. You're just gonna create more ANS arousal and more chemical imbalance and more fighting. So when you're dealing with 
value conflicts, you have to agree to disagree and work to find a way that is collaborative and respectful of your differences. You know, I got a, a, a hysterical call this week from a man who's in one of my groups. And he said that his wife was trying to force him to vote her way. She was going to make him go to the, the polls with her and vote her way. And, and she screamed, if you do not vote my way, we're gonna get divorced. Talk about a value conflict. This is happening in homes all over America because husbands and wives don't share the same political values. Very heated and it's the same thing. You have to be able to respect the values and not try to change them and steer clear of these conversations because it, you, you wouldn't want somebody trying to twist your arm and make you change your values any more than the other person wants it. So I also want you to be aware that many of our value conflicts, these political value conflicts now, actually conceal old scars. And what you wanna be talking about is the old scars, not again, the overt content. So to come back to that husband and wife, think about this. They both, the wife felt like a beaten down dog in her childhood. And so she's become a revolutionary fighting against um, those with money, fighting against um, the Republicans who she has linked in her mind with those with money. But her fight is really against her parents who didn't protect her against a brother who bullied her. And she's not aware that the old scar, scar is what is fueling her political values and then making her try to force her husband to vote with her because she's trying to turn her husband into the parent who's on her side and protects her. So you see what I'm saying? Even there, you have old scars lurking behind the value conflict. So be aware if it's heated and you can't shake it and it's value laden, again, be like a truffle pig, dig, 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 strip, 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 and find the old scar that's fueling even the va value conflict, okay? So my point to you is we want to cool the climate down. So we shut off the fight flight response. And when you do this, husband withdrawal, and fighting magically disappears and then guys stick around to resolve the conflicts with you. And that you do very simply using the step-by-step -step conflict resolution program that I outlined in Kiss Your Fights Goodbye. I wanna just give you a little story now that's very heartwarming and uplifting. This was when I still lived in uh, New York State and a very famous doctor and his wife came to see me. They had been in a fight for decades. Many couples struggle like this. They love each other, but they don't know how to get out of, you know, the fight. And the wife said, you know, you've been ignoring me. You don't listen to me. You, um, you, you sit like a bump on a log. You don't hear a thing I said. And I looked over at the husband and I could see ANS arousal. No hablo inglés, glazed expression, just deaf, dumb, and blind. And I said to her, guess what? Your husband's in ANS arousal. He hasn't heard a word you've said for 30 years. Because when you're in ANS arousal, the brain shuts down. It's an adaptive response, flee or fight. You don't think, because if you're thinking, you don't have time to flee the tiger. You don't think, you just flee. And he was psychically fleeing. And, he, and when you're in that shutdown, you process nothing, you hear nothing. And I said, I promise you, he's never heard a word you've said. She said, I don't believe it and I'm going to divorce him. And I said, look, don't believe it. Don't trust what I'm saying. Don't even let your guard down. Just humor me and calmly tell him one more time what it is that he's doing and how you feel about it. That's my X, Y formula. What he's doing and how you feel. She did it. He burst into tears because she presented in a cool way. He heard her. He wept and he said, I never knew I was doing that to you. I will change. They held each other. They resolved this 30 year fight. And I got a, a letter from them a year later saying, you know, you saved our marriage. We don't fight anymore. And I still hear from them from time to time. So I want this for you. And it starts with cooling the climate learning how to communicate in a way that's calm and cool so you don't set off this chemical imbalance. Okay, let's take a break. I'll be back with you in a moment.
Hi, it's Dr. J.B. Turndorf here. Are you feeling stressed, tense, jumpy, jittery, anxious, or having panic attacks or angry outbursts or disturbed sleep? Are you worried that you or someone you love is going to get sick or even die? Are you depressed and feeling hopeless like the world is coming to an end? Or are you suffering aches and pains or stiff muscles, low energy, or falling into self-damaging or addictive behaviors like binging on junk food, the internet, or TV, or abusing drugs or alcohol, or not eating right, or exercising, feeling like, what's the point? If you said yes to any of my questions, you are likely suffering what I call the global PTSD pandemic stress syndrome triggered by the coronavirus pandemic. Don't despair. My energetic system upgrade is your rescue remedy for the panic epidemic that is plaguing our world. The energetic system upgrade has already helped some of today's top leaders. Now you can experience your own energetic system upgrade healing transformation. To find out more and to schedule your session, visit drjamieturndorf.com slash energetic system upgrade. That's drjamieturndorf, T-U-R-N-D-O-R-F dot com slash energetic system upgrade. Love Never Dies is now on the Dream Vision 7 radio network every Wednesday and Thursday at 1 p.m. and 1 a.m. Eastern Time. Dr. Jamie Turndorf, also known as Dr. Love, is the number one international best-selling author of Love Never Dies, How to Reconnect and Make Peace with the Deceased. If you're grieving the loss of a loved one, tune in and find out how to reconnect and heal any unfinished business using Dr. Turndorf's groundbreaking new Dialoguing with the Departed technique. Visit AskDrLove.com to find out more. This is Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, uniting mankind with universal love. Our shows are created from the heart, bringing each listener to a place of divine enlightenment. Breathe, relax, and enjoy. Let life flow. You're listening to Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. If you can't stop crying over the bodily loss of a loved one, Dr. Turndorf's number one international bestseller, Love Never Dies, How to Reconnect and Make Peace with the Deceased, will show you how to toss out the tissues and transform your grief into joy using her groundbreaking new Dialoguing with the Departed technique that enables you to reconnect and even heal unfinished business with those in spirit without the assistance of a medium, channeler, or psychic. Sign up for Dr. Love's free newsletter at AskDrLove.com and receive an exciting gift, a free excerpt of Love Never Dies. And now, back to Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. Hello again and welcome back to Love Never Dies Radio on Dream Vision 7 Radio Network and Dr. Turndorf, Turn on the Love on Binge Network's television. Let me tell you again how you can reach out to me if you're listening live. Of course, if you're listening to the rebroadcast or uh, watching um, the recorded show over binge, you won't be able to call me live. But if you are live and you have a question for me, call toll-free 646-558-8656. And then you press the ID 883-69-53587. And then you press star nine and that will raise your hand. So my lovely engineer, Bob, will let me know you wanna talk to me, you have a question. That's 646-558-8656. And the ID is 883-6953-587 and then press star nine. So you know what I thought it might be fun for us to do now is to take a little quiz. And this is my uh, husband withdrawal ANS arousal quiz to let you know if, in fact, ANS arousal and husband withdrawal is actually causing your fighting. So you just want to answer true or false. The first question in the quiz is when we fight, that my guy seems to be frozen like a statue, true or false. Now, the next question is if I were to take his pulse it would be racing at 100 beats per minute or, or faster during our fight, true or false. 
my partner sweats during a fight, true or false. My partner's muscles are very tight during a fight, true or false. My partner turns away from me during a fight, true or false. My partner closes his eyes and won't make eye contact with me during a fight, true or false. My partner has a blank frozen stare during a fight, true or false. My partner defends, justifies, or counterblames me during a fight, true or false. My partner doesn't seem to be listening to me during a fight, true or false. My partner physically leaves to escape a fight in progress, true or false. My partner avoids me when he thinks a fight is brewing, true or false. Well, if you answered true to any of those questions, you're in ANS arousal, and that is the chemical imbalance that is underlying your fights. So the point here is we need to work together to cool the climate down, working together to heal our mutual old scars. You know, I always say life on earth is what I call our love lab. We're here to help each other heal the old scars that interfere with our ability to learn to love ourselves and to perfect our ability to love ourselves and others fully. That's the only reason we're here. When we're lying on our quote unquote deathbed, we're never going to say, gee, I didn't watch enough of this particular TV show, or I didn't make enough money. We're only going to regret the love we didn't share, that we didn't love as well as we wished we could have. So you have an opportunity now to really embrace what I'm talking about and master my conflict resolution method as I present in Kiss Your Fights Goodbye. That's my first Hay House book. Master this because when you learn to resolve your old scars and you and cool the climate, fighting fades and that allows the love to shine through. And that's what we're here, for to, here to do, love each other. And you know, your love spans out on what I call the energy pipeline and you have the power to create world peace, one relationship at a time. You're like a pebble in a pond. You cast that pebble, your loving and peaceful relationship sends reverberations out on the pipeline, healing the planet, one relationship at, the, at a time. So you could be a love re revolutionary along with me. And, you know, I, uh, I have like the little, little quotes that I make that are short and sweet to remind you. It's easy as pie to kiss your fights goodbye. You'll make love more when you end the war. Make keeping cool your number one relationship rule. And when the climate is cool, your love will rule. Okay. Now, I thought it might be fun for us to go over some questions that I've received. You know, Ask Dr. Love is the first relationship advice site on the web. I began it in 1995. That's 25 years ago. It's hard for me to believe I've been running that site for 25 years. It's been really a free mission to connect souls, as I said, on the earth and now the spirit planes. And one of the things that I have done for decades was answer questions that people submitted to me to the free online column. Now, I'm, I don't have time to answer questions anymore but I have made all the questions and all the answers that I have posted over the decades available to you for free at AskDrLove.com. All you have to do is go to my website, AskDrLove.com, and on the top menu, you'll see um, search the archives. And when you click on that, you will be able to put in any keyword that relates to your issue. You just type in the word and the site will generate all the questions and all the answers that I have given over the decades that connect to your problem. You know, we're all so similar that our problems really boil down to the same basic old scars. And then the over fights we fight about really can be traced back to the same old scars. So reading questions that I've answered from other people will also help you to get a handle on what your issues are. So 
let's let's do this one. This is from somebody who said, I don't want to fight all the time. Okay, Dr. Love, I'm so happy with the guy I'm with, and I see us being together for the rest of my life. Our problem is we argue about a lot, but we get over it real fast. I don't like arguing and fighting and then getting all lovey-dovey. I don't want to fight or argue anymore. I don't want to ruin what we have. I love him with every ounce of life in me. What do I do to solve my problem? I try ignoring what would make us argue, but then it builds up and that isn't good. Please, Dr. Love, help me. I love him too much to let him go. Help, help, help. I want him as my lover for all time. Please help. Okay, so I bet anybody who's watching or listening can relate to this kind of situation where, as I said earlier, you love each other. The issue is not lack of love. But unresolved fighting does erode love. And obviously swallowing feelings isn't helping. So chronic fighting erodes a relationship. So we need to help you both learn how to discuss your difficult issues. So kiss your fights goodbye. My step-by-step guide for resolving relationship conflict is really your relationship Bible. You know, we never learned how to resolve our fights in our first families. We only modeled after the dysfunctional fighting tactics that our parents used and how well did that work for them. So what you need to do is master my conflict resolution program. It's like going to relationship school. And it my method's effective for over 90% of the people who use it. So just buy the book, follow the method. But Let's focus on, you know, just some little like bullet points to get you started. You know, if you're fighting, the first thing you need to know is you're not hearing each other. When you don't feel heard, you shout louder, which only creates more anger, more chemical imbalance, more withdrawal, less listening, and the fighting escalates. So the first thing you got to do in order to hear each other is you got to make sure to communicate what's upsetting you in a way that's hearable right? So you want to use my XY formula, which consists of calmly describing. Remember I said we got to cool the climate because heated communications create that chemical imbalance. So we want to calmly describe no screaming, no yelling, no shouting, right? No fight traps. You want to substitute the fight traps with a calm description of what the other person said or did and how that made you feel. X is what was said or done. Why is how you feel. Now, if your partner is very defensive or if you've been fighting for a long time and your fuse is really, really short and you're already in ANS arousal, you want to not use the word you at all. So instead of saying I felt hurt or angry when you, when you called me names, you want to reword the sentence without the word you and say instead, when I'm called names, I feel hurt or I feel angry. So you see the neutrality when I am called names rather than when, rather when you do blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now the cooler you stay when you're presenting what's bothering you, the easier it's going to be for the other person to hear you and then stick around rather than withdraw and discuss the issue with you and vice versa. Now, after you present your issue, the person who's receiving the presentation needs to repeat back what he or she heard. And if the receiver understood correctly, then the speaker says, you got it, exactly right. And if the listener didn't understand, Then the speaker has to restate what is bothering him or her. And then again, the listener has to reflect his or her understanding once again. And you do this until the listener gets it. That's called perceptual consensus. It's actually a process when you, do you know, 95% of all fights can be resolved by feeling truly heard and understood. And if you really feel the person got you, you feel better, you feel resolved. It works like a charm. So good listening consists of restating, mirroring, and all questioning to clarify. Questioning is, did I understand you right? Did you mean this? And then the other person says, you got it exactly, or it was this, but, and then the person says back the but that you didn't get. And then again, you state it back until there's a meeting of the minds. 
Now, it's really important also for the listener to remember, don't try to talk the speaker out of his or her feelings. You just have to also remember, this is not a court of law, it's a court of love. Feelings aren't wrong or right. The other person is just describing his or her emotional reality, often created by the old scars. So we don't wanna take it personally and we do not wanna try to talk the person out of it, right? So also, you have to remember as the listener to wait your turn before you insert your side of the story. I call that giving emotional right of way. Only after the initial speaker feels completely heard and completely understood, can you then take your turn by saying, okay, now that you feel understood and heard by me, do you feel resolved? Yes. Now, are you ready to have me talk to you about my experience? And then this is what you do. And then you take turns and the other now mirrors and restates and questions to clarify. This is how we love each other in action. Love in action, right? And do you see how when you're doing what I'm describing, you're fighting for the relationship, not for the individual players. It's not about, oh, I'm right and you're wrong, which is another fight trap. It's I want to hold you in my heart and I want to understand you and I want to make sure that I get what I said or did that landed wrong. Do you see the difference in that way? The difference is like night and day because I am loving you through the fight and I am telling you I don't want to hurt you and I want to understand what I said or did and I want to make a repair. Now, could you imagine how the world would be a better place if you began to practice this in every relationship that you have and you modeled this behavior for your children, your friends, your family, your co-workers? Can you imagine how you would help to save this world and this planet? We wouldn't be in the messes we're in now, the political warring, the trashing people verbally. I mean, it's horrendous what's going on. And I'm asking you to join me in this fight. I started this fight 37 years ago, trying to get people to be love revolutionaries. Please join me and kiss your fights goodbye. I'll see you next time on Love Never Dies Radio and Dr. Turndorf, Turn on the Love on Binge Networks TV. This is Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, uniting mankind with universal love. Our shows are created from the heart, bringing each listener to a place of divine enlightenment. Breathe, relax, and enjoy. Let life flow.